Hey everybody, it's Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, Joe Pal. And a magical thing happened today. Xlights 2022.16 found its way to our doorsteps. And I thought, let's talk about it. Let's talk about some of the things I think are really cool and some of the things I don't quite understand and some of the things I just don't really care about. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't. There's always a reason why things are uh, enhanced, changed, modified, added, deleted, all these things. There's always reasons, not always the greatest reasons, but always a reason nonetheless. So let's get into this. I woke up this morning and someone else stole my thunder and said, hey, 2022, 16 is out. Ooh, okay. And I said, okay, I rode my bike 100 miles yesterday, so I'm going to be a little slow getting into this. So here we are. We're getting into it. Uh, Keith uh, is just dominating here. I mean, I don't know. I love my name too, but man, this is like Keith everywhere here. So let's just see what Keith did. Uh, allow option, turn off house and model window docking. Yeah. Where was this in 2016? Yeah. I love this. I really, really love this. And, and let me explain why. Uh, it's not uncommon uh, to be in your sequencer and to take something like this and you drag it and, and oh no, it just docked. And you have to hold down the control key. And this became, this just sort of became a big lesson, you know, to drop things. And, and now there is a way to make sure that doesn't do that. Or is there? I'm on a Mac. Is this only for Windows? Let's find out. If I go to my view and I go to perspectives and I scroll down here, oh no, what's going on? It's not here. Well, if you're on the Windows side, there's a little, uh, another button and by default it is checked. Now, is this something that can happen on the Mac side? I don't know. But if you're on the Windows side, you'll probably enjoy this because it does allow you to keep these windows from trying to dock like this. They'll just sit there and float. It's the same thing as holding down control key. Now, granted, I know holding down the control key is so 2021, but it's sort of what we're used to. For me, if I never see it on the Mac side, I don't care. For new folks coming in, it's going to prompt a question and they're going to go, how do I keep my window from not docking? And they're going to go, go to the Zoom room. They'll sort you out. And they probably would, but it's sort of, it's kind of a waste of their time in many ways because uh, yeah, the word on the street is you hold down the control key or uh, command key if you're on the Mac and it won't dock. Anyway, I took my hand off the command key and we're back. Let's get to the next one. Uh, on Falcon and FPP allowed definition of zigzag in X lights for upload. And we'll do a two for here. Include controller connection zigzag in X model export and import. Now I always love the ability to bring things with you like Submodels. When you uh, export a, a, a model that has submodels, it'll take the submodels and put them in there and suitcase them right up in that file, the X model file. And so when you import it, it's going to ask you, hey, uh, all these ones you included as submodels, you know, uh, you want those, right? Yep, 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 yep. So we, I've done tons of videos on that. Anyway, but this other one here on Falcon and FPP, allow definition of zigzag in X lights for upload. Why? I need a tutorial on this. I need, uh, I need uh, someone maybe to explain this. And maybe if I hung out in the Zoom room a lot more, uh, maybe I would know, but I don't. So in my mind, if you're looking at a model like this matrix, and over here on the left, we have told it that it is four strings of 288 nodes. Strings equals outputs. There are four outputs in each eight pal output. There are 400, 288 nodes. Okay. And there are six strings or six strands per string. Okay. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look here. Let me go to my node layout and it opens up this window. And if we look here, here's my four strings. One, two, three, four. 
Anyone want to take a guess at how many strands per string there are? That's correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know another word you can use for strands per string? That's right. Zigzag. And that's what these are called. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And it does that four times in each output. So I'm not sure what the use case is for being able to add that in the X model, although I'm, I'm dying to find out. Uh, Keith, I don't think he's made a video in a couple months, so I'm sure he'll come out with some reason or somebody will chime in, and I appreciate that in advance, uh, letting me know just exactly what this is going to be beneficial for. Love to know. Uh, add an X schedule command to clear all pixel overlays. Mr. Ruskin, thank you for that. Uh, I don't use X schedule, but thank you. Uh, enhancement. Scott has updated uh, WLED 0.13.2 updates. Uh, WLED, which is in the effects for uh, the single string single str single strand tool let me just put that on the topper here uh this is a pretty cool thing uh let's just put this on layer star and of course all of these things you can do with the fx there are a ton of these ton of these and if you're looking to become a professional sequencer just start here just start playing with these and throw them in the store for uh you know 120 no for 10 bucks and you'll be you'll be set in gold you'll be good to go look at that look at that intensity no intensity a little bit of intensity a whole lot of intensity so there are some really neat things you can do i do like the fx i don't know what the enhancements are uh so scott will chime in and say it does this or there are more of them and i'm not going to go through here and count these i'm not going to go through here and go through each one that's something you should do and i'll eventually do it anyway all right let's move on to our next one and my window has gone again there we go uh add x map hint mapping for strands and sub models now this one really piqued my interest because anything we can do to help folks in the mapping process is a win in my book okay so let's take a look at this. Let me get rid of this guy here. And I have a song on here. We're gonna map this. So I'm gonna import, import effects. I'm gonna tell us to go look at the desktop. And here's Nutcracker Christmas. Double click on that, extracts the package. It opens up the dialog box here. And what's new? What's different? What's new? Let's see, let's see. I know what's new. Do you see it? Do you see it? Ah, looky, looky. Uh, that's a group. There's a line. This tells you it's a line effect. Um, oh, look at all these new little icons here. Yeah, ice, matrix, it even has a tree for a mega tree. So for those of you that can't quite connect the dots between a mega tree and a physical mega tree, uh, this could help. Uh, and I'm, I'm joking, of course, but for things like custom models, and I'm looking for it here. Uh, you can see most of my models are in the group level, but if there was an individual uh, custom model, like just a Grand Illusion, you would see the custom model icon next to it, and it would tell you basically, try to map that to a custom model over here. And the same thing with the submodel groups. You can see here twig tree. Now, I think what would be interesting is to not only have these icons on this side of the row, which represents the sequencers sequencing effects, but also to match them over here and possibly offer some type of automation where based on these, maybe take a stab at automatically mapping like for like. And this was a conversation I had with Keith many years ago. Would it be cool if there was like sort of a segmented uh, model type and we could map based on the type of model or sub model it was? And I don't think that ever happened. And so, but I do appreciate Scott Hansen just pushing the boundaries and making the efficiencies of X lights just that much easier for new folks. That's a huge win. So I can't wait to mess around with this a little bit more. Thanks, Scott. 
Let's continue on in our journey of 2022.16. Uh, we are now looking at fixed hang if X schedules both FPP master and remote. Uh, that's probably a good thing. I don't use X schedule. Uh, fixed flash when X schedule starts video. Uh, okay, when I say I don't use X schedule, that's not entirely true because I work with a lot of projects and people every year uh, and they use X schedule because X schedule still works. Do I prefer FPP? Yes. But somebody brand new coming into the hobby that simply doesn't really want to learn about this stuff, then I prefer X schedule if it's a basic, simple show. Uh, yeah, so it has its place. Address X lights lagging due to timer issues. I haven't seen that except when I'm using X schedule. So I, I hope that's been fixed. I, I don't know if that's pertaining to that, but if it has, then that's a great win. Resize of effect rows does not immediately adjust number of rows. That must be a Windows thing. Don't see that on the Mac. Fix multi-select of state effect corrupt state radio button. Don't care. Fix X I do. Oh, I do. Uh, close X lights does not work. I have not a clue. Fix ugly outline on FX buttons. Ye I've never seen this. Uh, it's not ugly on the Mac side. Uh, fix the X I do. Open sequence does not accept sequence name in JSON. I don't know if they're talking about JSON from Gilbert Engineering or not. Sounds more like... Um, programming language, but uh, yeah, don't know. Uh, fix picture effect warns multiple times that file not valid. Would it be times that the file is not valid? But that's okay. Uh, Australians love to abbreviate everything. If you've ever had a conversation with an Australian, uh, it, it, trust me, it's the <laughs> the opposite of that is some of the language in Europe where uh, they've now replaced one word with three or four. Yeah, okay. Someone's got to figure out the English language. I mean, we screwed it up years ago, so someone needs to help. Fix picture effects, warning multiple times. Um, I don't know that I've seen that. I don't know if I've seen that issue. Uh, certainly not on the uh, Mac side. Fix replace model loses group membership. Now, that's got to suck, uh, but I haven't seen that either. Maybe it's been a while since I've replaced the model, but I haven't seen it lose group membership, so not really sure. Fix Falcon FPP upload over Wi-Fi not working. Yeah, so there were some grumblings about this over the last week or so, people having issues with Wi-Fi and being able to push. Uh, I'm a firm believer where you can wire, you should wire, and where you can't, uh, wait for updates like this to fix it. Uh, Mr. Ruskin, oh, he's got two entries here. Way to go. Fix set pixel range. Doesn't clear pixels when channel count is zero is used. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. You have to drop me a line. Let me know what that means. Uh, adjust XY locations of FPP virtual display map to whole preview, not the arbitrary bounding box. I think that's a big one, especially if you're running a projector or a TV uh, using FPP. Uh, getting that to center is probably a very good thing. Uh, I don't do a ton of that, so not really a problem for me, but I do know a lot of people do that. Um, and then Scott, fix strand rendering with layered arches and stars. I sent him a message asking, what the heck is this? Fix strand rendering with layered arches and stars. So what did I do? I played around with my arches and stars and tried to find some way... Uh, to do something to see what this was about. Uh, something I would love to see, and I'll just take this moment to show you, is that with the single star, and this is true for all stars that are concentric, concentric rings, let me just go put this back on chases here, uh, this layer star is a feature over here that allows you to do some really cool things that I just love, right? Um, from middle, bounce right, left, whatever you want to do, it could do some things that you cannot do if it is a custom star. So the custom stars don't look so pretty uh, with these type of things. What I would love to be able to see is if I copy this and I paste this in the stars group, I would love to be able to see a star layer rendering style that does the same thing uh well maybe not maybe well i mean that sort of is the same thing but you can only use star layer at the single model level 
What if I had multiple? Anyway, I'm just, I'm, just, you know what? Now I'm just talking out my butt. Anyway, I'm not going to complain. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Anytime we can get any of that stuff to do really unique and creative things, it's good. And I'm sure Scott will get back to me and all of us on what this fixed strand rendering with layered arches and stars is all about. And then the last one here on Hinks Pix Pro, move DMX after pixels. Um, that's probably a good thing. I don't know what the challenges were by having it the opposite of that, but uh, Scott's been an advocate for bringing in uh, different vendors, makes and models for controllers, and I have to take my hat off to him for doing so. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that would have been looked upon as, are you kidding? No, nothing other than... Uh, Falcon will ever be in uh, in X lights and and somewhere along the way that changed and I think that was a pivotal 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 there we go uh, turning point for X lights and its acceptance for uh, multiple vendors no matter who the brand was so I think that's the evolution and progress of uh, a great software all right enough rambling for me. If you start to notice any issues with this, uh, reach out, let me know. I'll be working with this throughout the week. Uh, so far this morning, I haven't seen anything that has stood out, no crashes. Uh, remember, it's only uh, mid-August. Our shows don't start until, well, yeah, they start pretty quick. So uh, I'm sure the devs will be taking note of any issues we have with this version and making adjustments along the way. All right. That's it. I hope you guys have a great, productive week. See you later.